All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our example game video for Champions of Meandir. My name is Alvin. I'm the designer and game director for Champions of Meandir, and I'm here with Nick. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Nick. Hey, everybody. I'm Nick. I'm the, uh, I'm the artist here in the game. Yes. Awesome, awesome. So in this video, we assume you've watched our How to Play video already. If you haven't, we suggest watching that first, and we'll post a link to it in the video description. But the goal of this video is to play a few turn cycles of the game, so you can see how the game mechanics work in action, and we probably won't play till the end since this video is simply for learning purposes, and we want to keep it as concise as possible. What we're using here is the Champions of Meander browser app. This is a free app that lets you connect and play with your friends through a web browser, and we'll post a link to that as well in the video description. There's a lot more to say about the browser app, but we'll save it for another video for the sake of time. Okay, so I think we're ready to jump into the game. Yeah, let's go ahead here. All right, so first, let's take a look at the deck we're playing. So this is a starter deck, and we actually recommend using starter decks when you're first learning the game. And Nick and I are both using the same starter deck, just to keep things simple. So let's go ahead and take a look at the deck's champion, Aldrian, famed explorer. So the way this champion works is his second ability says, when you end your turn, score one point for each other denizen you control that didn't enter your active zone this turn. So the way Eldrian works is you want to fill your board with tons of denizens and keep them around for at least one turn cycle so that when Eldrian is in play and you end your turn, it'll trigger his ability and score you points. And um, from the how to play video, you should be familiar with points as being the win condition in this game. And as you can see here, uh, I'm just clicking over here on Nick's side of the board. He's playing the exact same champion. All right. So... Nick was selected to go first, as you can see here in the log. So I'm going to go ahead and create a supply cache. Uh, if you've watched the How to Play video, you'll know what this is. It's basically to give the person going second a little bit of an advantage, uh, just to make up for the inherent disadvantage of going second. So I'll go ahead and take my mulligan, and then we'll, and then we'll begin. So probably put this, this bottom, and draw back up to seven, and shuffle. And whenever you're ready, Nick, go ahead and start the game all right so my mulligan's complete uh we'll start my first turn and gain a gold and i'll use that gold to uh, uh to play a marked map spending it and then i'll take a free draw for the turn this action can be done once very useful thing to do and then i will play a location nice this location uh has a, a an ability on it. It's an activated ability. And uh, the arrival keyword says uh, that you may do it if it came into turn, uh, came into play this turn. So I'm going to uh, use it, which in this case is to look at the top card of my deck. Nice. Decide if I would like it. And I may leave it there on top, or I may put it on the bottom. I think this time this is going to the bottom. Nice. All right, why don't you Stop go ahead looking. and explain marked map as well, the other card that you played? Sure. Uh, as an item, it's uh, an unaligned card. And if I use a gold to activate it, uh, I may fetch a non-unique location card. Uh, so it might be another type of the card that I just played, like this Verdant Path. Uh, and then I lose this item. Uh, but another thing you can do with items every turn is you have one cell, uh, one cell action you can take. And you may sell it for the amount of gold that it costs, you to, uh, that it costs in the top left corner. Um, I could do that now. Uh, but there's really not an advantage doing now. So we'll pass the turn. Very nice. All right, so yeah, I will go ahead and begin my turn, which gets me gold equal to the number of turns I've taken. And then I will go ahead and play this location here. Uh, I'll go ahead and use my free draw. So I'll go ahead and quickly describe this location here. It's got the first ability that most locations have, which is it'll align you to one of the five alignment types. This one aligns me to green, which means I can now play cards that um, are also aligned to green without paying alignment tax. And it's got the second ability, a paid ability, that says put a search counter on this. If this has two or more search counters, gain two, then this loses this ability. So what this allows me to do is I can pay into it and essentially store up gold. And when I use this ability again at a later turn, it'll essentially accelerate me in gold for that turn. All right, so I think the next thing I'll do is I'll play another location. 
locations are free, so you can throw out as many as you want per turn. And then I will go ahead and uh, use my supply cash. So this paid ability says if you pay one, you gain two gold and draw a card, then lose this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pay one to activate the ability. It gains me two gold, draws me a card, and then I lose the supply cash. And then I will use that gold to play this card, Young Adventurer. So Young Adventurer has an expedition ability, which says this gets plus one plus one. So like Nick was describing with the arrival ability, expedition is also a conditional ability. Um, with this ability, on the other hand, it's unlocked if you've played a location card. And I have, I played two in fact, so his expedition ability is unlocked. So I'll go ahead and use that there to give him plus one plus one. And then um, Statue of the Fierce Hunter also has a second ability set that says a denizen gets plus zero plus one. So I can actually go ahead and use that right now uh, to give him another health. Okay, cool. So at this point here, I can also abandon a location. You have one abandoned action each turn. So I'll go ahead and do that here to draw another card. Uh, all right, and I think that'll be it for my turn. I'll pass it over to you, Nick. Cool. So my turn starts. I'll gain my turn gold, which should be up to two now. Let's make that happen. And um, you don't have to start the turn with drawing a card, but I like having options early on, so I'm going to take my free draw action. Nice. Hmm. Now we'll play another location. Uh, if you have, as, as you saw last turn with Alvin, uh, you may play any number of locations from your hand as you like. Uh, you can also just keep them in your hand, whatever feels advantageous to you. Um, but I'm going to play it out there because I think I'm going to use one gold for a killer bee. Nice. And use another gold to uh, um, up the hidden thicket, which is what Alvin described him having as well. That's right. Paying one gold to put a search counter. Very nice. Yeah. So primed for a future turn. And I believe that will be all I do. Cool. And actually, Killer Bees has a ability as well. Why don't you go ahead and describe what Deadly does? Ah, yes. So Deadly is an ability that uh, checks during combat. If damage is dealt to another denizen, uh, you will destroy that denizen for it. Right. So a quick note about keywords. We know many new players find keywords daunting at first, but if you have the new player reference document with you while you're learning, it won't take that long to learn what each of them do. And we'll post a link to the new player reference document in the video description as well. And yeah, one more thing that I'd like to say about keywords for, you know, for those of you feeling intimidated, the list is more or less exhaustive, meaning there's currently no plans to introduce new ones into the game. So once you've learned these keywords, you've learned them all for the foreseeable future, even as new cards get added to the game. So just a quick note about keywords there. Um, all right, so on my turn, I'll go ahead and begin the turn, which will give me two gold, because I've taken two gold, uh, two turns this game. And I'll use that gold to play this card, Survival Training. So Survival Training is a campaign. So if you've watched the How to Play video, you should understand how campaigns work at this point. Uh, but just to give you a reminder, uh, they, don't, they don't do anything when you first play them, but every turn after you've played them, you put a phase counter on them, and phase counters unlock their phase abilities. So this one says, phase one and two, a denizen gets plus one plus one and becomes resilient. So because both this card's phase one and phase two do the same thing, they're condensed into a single paragraph, just for brevity. All right, and then I'll go ahead and use my free draw. So if I attack the killer bee, with my young adventurer, even though my young adventurer has a lot more health, uh, because the killer bee is deadly, um, dealing one damage to the young adventurer, as Nick says, will cause it to rem uh, be removed. And so uh, I actually do not want to attack the, the killer bee. But what you can do in this situation is attack a location or an item. So in this case, we've got this item over here. So I'll display combat here by selecting this to be the defender and the young adventurer as the attacker. And I'll go ahead and attack. Yep. So there, his two attack was enough to deal the, uh, to match the two health. And, and so it's destroyed and put into my inactive zone. Nice. Go ahead and end my turn. Sorry, go ahead and end my turn. Pass it over to you, Nick. All right, start of my turn, gain all my gold. And I need the extra gold from Hidden Thicket this turn. 
I think uh, I think we'll just take a moment to get our champion into play. Nice. So for three gold, I will play Eldrian Famed Explorer. Champion lives in a different area than the rest of your deck, the champion zone. And they're always available for you to play as long as you have the gold to do so. Uh, if at any time they're removed, that's the area they'll go back to is the champion zone. They don't go with the other cards into the inactive zone or back into your deck. And it's so that you can always have access to your uh, sort of fundamental point scoring ability. Your deck nice. is built around. So for me, uh, I'd like to start gaining some points. And uh, I would only do so if my bees live. So I will not be attacking into his young adventure. Um, one thing that I can do, like Alvin swung at my item, is I can swing at his locations. Deadly is not going to affect the location by destroying it immediately, but it will uh, still do one damage. So I'm going to take a swing with my bees at his hidden thicket. Bees are getting rowdy. Yeah. They're uh, they're building a hive. You know, they have to take some... some <laughs> they have to in interact with their environment a little bit. All right. So with that said, that's the end, marks the end of my turn, and will have me gain a point, according to Eldrian, because of my one B that's in play. Very nice. You're on the board. All right, mm -hmm. so I'll go ahead and take my turn. I'll begin the turn, getting me three gold, and then I'll put a phase counter on each campaign I control. So I'm going to go ahead and now play for three gold this card here, the Skilled Huntress. So Skilled Huntress has deadly and ranged. So we went over what deadly did. Ranged is a new keyword. Range says that this will deal damage before denizens that are not ranged. So it's pretty powerful when combined with deadly because it'll deal its damage first and deadly will remove it before it has a chance to do any damage. Um, and then I will go ahead and now activate survival training because it's got one phase counter I can use as phase one. So I'll go ahead and give my skilled huntress plus one plus one, bringing her to a three two and then um, I'll give it the resilient keyword. So resilient is a keyword that means when the player ends their turn, this denizen will heal back any power or health that it lost during that turn. All right. And then I will go ahead and take my free draw. And yes, I think that'll do it for my turn. Pass it over to you, Nick. Thanks. All right. Start my turn, gain my gold. Um, yeah, I will draw one card for my free action. I think this turn is when Hidden Thicket will be used, so we'll pay another gold into it. Nice. Um, to put another search counter on it, and because it has two, the next part of the ability goes off and says, I will gain two gold back. So it's paid off, and then I cannot use this ability again. That's but right. I did go up on this turn very useful. Yeah. Three of that. Total gold will be for Hungry Bear. Ooh. And then I will have my bees adapt. Wow. With this tactic. That is so I play cool. it. And my bees uh, undergo a, a rapid adaptation. <laughs> and they're now some of the largest bees you've ever seen. And what this does is a tactic that uh, says a denizen adapts, which is a keyword that causes a denizen that I control to become equal to the greatest power among denizens I control in my active zone, plus one. So that was the point of playing my giant bear first, uh, is that the bee's power will increase to four plus one, or five. Wow. Uh, and its health also will do that. Adept does it to both the statuses. Of this. So I have an, enorm an alarmingly large bee, something <laughs> that even a bear would be afraid of. Oh, and, no. Uh, Not we'll the see. Bees. We'll see how far that gets me. Yeah. Uh, so with that, I will be out of gold and things to do this turn. Uh, I suppose I can make an attack. I'm going to try with Eldrian to make a swing All right. at, the, at the location. So at the end of my turn, I will pass back to Elvin. And because of that, at the end of my turn, I'll gain one more point from the bee who's lived again. Back to you. Nice. All right. So I'll go ahead and get my gold for the turn and put a face counter on my campaign. And let's see, what do I want to do here? Okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and play my champion. But first I'm going to play a bee. 
so I can get a card out of my hand, uh, which will allow me to use the free draw action without having to put that card back. Uh, I'll go ahead and play with a landscape. And then now I'll go ahead and play my champion for three gold because I would like to start scoring some points. Uh, Eldrian's first ability says fetch a non-unique location card. So I'll show you guys how that looks here. It lets you look at your deck, select a non-unique location. I'll select this one and then shuffle. So I'll go ahead and play that as well. Look at top card of my deck and I think I'll have that be put to the bottom. All right. And then I'll go ahead and abandon this location here because I don't think it's long for life and draw a card. All right, so these two denizens did not enter my active zone this turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and end my turn now and Eldrian will see these two and score me two points. The race is on. Right, cool. Pass that way. All right, start of my turn, gain my gold. I'll take a free draw for my turn. And as Alvin said, we're, we're racing, racing to gain some points. So I'm going to be putting a lot of denizens in play as well. I'll play a young adventure for two. And a disaster survivors for three. Nice. And I will have a location to play this turn as well, wooded landscape. So that my young adventurer, like Alvin's, can start going on his expedition, seeing the world, and... Um, gaining his plus one, plus one. So I'll use that ability. Yeah, so something to note is while I would like to gain points by having my own denizens play in play, uh, since I'm aware of his strategy, I need him to have fewer denizens in play than I do. Mm -hmm. So uh, one attack that I can make that's uh, profitable, I guess I would say, is I'll have my hungry bear attack into his young adventurer. Oh no, my adventurer, he's devoured. Yeah. So hungry bear was not, you know, the... It doesn't come out of this completely unharmed. Uh, he takes the two damage that uh, corresponds to the young adventurer's attack. That's right. So he's not unscathed, but That's he is right. no longer hungry. <laughs> yeah. So my, although my bees are mighty, uh, I will not make the attack into the skilled huntress due to the ranged ability uh, that right. will make her strike first. And the bees are not as large as they may be; they can't see that arrow coming. So that'll be the only attack I make. And I'll go to the end of my turn and gain two points for the denizens that were around since the start of the turn. Nice. Back to you. All right. So I think I'll just take one more turn because um, at this point, I think you can see how the game progresses and flows. Um, so I'll go ahead and take, uh, I'll begin my turn. And yeah, I'll just play these two cards here. And yeah, from here, we would continue on like this until one of us scores 20 points or until the end of the 10th turn, whichever, ha whichever happens first. So if no one reaches 20 points by the end of the 10th turn, whoever has the highest score would win. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's, uh, that's everything you need to see to kind of give yourself some context for all the things that you learned in the how to play video. And yeah, I hope you found this helpful. As always, feel free to ask questions or give us feedback to help us improve. And Nick, did I miss anything? Not as far as I can tell. Uh, I'll just say thanks for the good game uh, and look forward to seeing new players coming and enjoying in our Discord and playing games with them. All right. Awesome. Take care, everyone, and see you next time.